Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, more accusers. Also, the V-Team takes a look at a yearbook. And there's calls for investigations into sexual misconduct in Washington. No, there's nothing funny about any of this. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the VT. Welcome all. Hello. 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 Good to have you back, Jack. Good to be back, thanks. No shave November, right? Yeah, and I can't wait till December. I understand. This has been a long week. Uh, you know, it's amazing, This these stories about Judge Roy Moore, U.S. Senate candidate from Alabama, just broke a little over a week ago, and it has been bad like it's been three months. You know, it's just been so long. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier, and we were like, yeah, that article came out, what, a few weeks ago? Nope. Like, just, what, eight, nine days ago? Yeah. 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 It's been yeah. insane how fast the story has moved in the news. And one thing we want to let our viewers know before we start today's discussion, there is never an occasion where a grown man or grown woman or anybody should be inappropriate with a minor child. That's unacceptable in any way to all of us here. Today we're going to look at some of the facts in this allegations against Roy Moore. And this is not to take Mr. Moore's side or to take sides against the allegations. This is just to look at the facts. Susan, in the original post piece, there were four women that were quoted as having had encounters mm -hmm. with uh, Roy Moore. They were in their 14, 16, 17, 18. And one of them makes an allegation that would have been illegal. The others say, OK, well, two of them said their mother gave them permission. Mm -hmm. One of them says that their mother did not give them permission. So we have to really look at these facts. By now, all these women were accusers. There's nothing that they accuse him of here. Right. Except for the one. The except one. For Lee Corfman, the, right? the other ones say basically now, you know, it seemed appropriate at the time, but now when they look back and they think about their own daughters in that context, it doesn't seem appropriate to them. But my concern, like you said, is now uh, everyone who actually says something about Roy Moore in the national media is being called an accuser. When in like this situation, there's only one accuser that. And, and, and God, I, I hope that they're not true, but we don't know that. Uh, the one that looks, the one that is the accusation, Jack, that, that would have a criminal penalty to it, sadly it was a misdemeanor at that time, is Lee Korfman, who was 14 years old at the time. Yeah, and, and that's the most egregious accusation. The other three women were of legal age to date. Roy Moore, who was much older, but it wasn't a crime. It's just and creepy. two of them bought into it, and... One of them, mom didn't think it was appropriate. Well, and so, it, but when the media calls them uh, accusers, they're not accusing him of anything criminal. And, and Beth, they, they did. Two of them said that their mothers okayed it. Both of them said that they, Roy Moore was good marriage material. I, I don't think we would hear that today. Even those women said today they wouldn't think so. Right. Well, and the times have changed a little bit since the 70s. In the 70s, not all women went to college. Not all women had careers before they got married and had families if they chose to do that. So I think part of this is we have to kind of step back. And I wasn't alive in 1977, but y'all all were. And you can you can attest to this that it was different the way that, that people interacted. But, you know, I think Jack's exactly right. One of them is saying 
what Roy Moore did was a crime at the time. Three of them are just saying, yeah, that's really creepy. And in hindsight, that shouldn't have happened. And, and, and one thing here is it, they're drowning <coughs> out Lee Kaufman's voice by saying you know, four allegations. It's one. Listen to her voice. Don't drown it out with all well, the, the other rest of this stuff. Is, is look, it, 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 I would think as a father, it would be, you know, I wouldn't let a 30 year old man date my 16 year old daughter. Now, if it came to my 18 year old daughter, she'd probably overrule us in that mm -hmm. and, and do whatever she thought she wanted to do. But again, uh, the accusations were that he did go and was very inappropriate taking off the shirt and pants and allegedly trying to get her to touch him uh, on his genitals. She said no, he took her home. The other women said that they dated him, there was nothing inappropriate. They did say that afterwards it became creepy. Uh, as an older woman. As an older woman, they mm -hmm. found it creepy. Uh, Beth, this story has grown exponentially over time. I mean, now we have people saying he was banned from the mall, that he was a, a creepy stalker at the mall. Now, I mean, it, it's just, it's like it's we've got butt grabbing here as an right. assault. Every, everything is taken on a life of, of itself. You've been on the national media. I've been on the national media. Susan's been on. Jack has avoided them. No, I, I was on one. Oh, you were on one. <laughs> I found that a lot of them, if you didn't, you know, they wanted you to say, have an opinion about Roy mm -hmm. Moore. They didn't want facts. They wanted an opinion about right. Roy Moore. Oh, boy, I have opinions for him. But, I mean, also, yeah, I mean, what the, the guy that worked at the mall when um, Don Lemon played back the clip for me of the guy, he said what the police told him was, you know, watch out for Roy Moore. And he said, well, why? And he said, just call us if you see him. And so that doesn't sound like he's been banned. It's not what he said. He didn't say he's not allowed in the mall. He said, let us know if he comes in here. But one of the girls said that she was working as an elf at Christmas and Roy Moore was flirting with her. So if the man's flirting with elves at Santa's workshop, like that is, that's well, kind of creepy. The, the man, <laughs> at least it wasn't a reindeer. That's the, the guy, the security guard, though, didn't he come, he came along later. The guy, the guy that was the director of the mall at the time, Jack, said he was never banned. But he also said, I'm voting for Roy Moore. So, well, okay. But, but there, there are various shop owners who have said uh, that he indeed did hang around. You know, I think you would call it loitering today, but... But it was um, before you had Tinder. How else did you pick up yeah. girls? Yeah, <laughs> we've seen that just well, today on the, the set. I mean, I picked it up 15 people. years ago from a friend when Roy Moore first came on the scene, who lives in Gadsden, and I won't out her, but she said it was kind of a known fact that he used to like to hang around, particularly in belts. Well, you know? and, and the, you have to understand too, Jack, and you're from, you, you and I are both from that era, and I was a teenager during that time, there was nowhere else to go. Well, there you were, were either bars. Well, he could have hung out in bars. You know, people in right. their, their teens and 20s and all of that, that's where you went. You went to the mall to meet up with your friends. In fact, they had to stop because it was called cruising the mall. Yeah, people know. would, you know, go round and round the mall in well, their cars. Yeah, I, if if he was looking to pick was. up women, there were plenty of women in the bars in Gadsden in 1979. Say, that, that I he haven't hung out at the mall since the I was probably does. 18. Anyway, could have exactly. gone to the fuzzy duck. We're going to leave it right there. This is a very serious subject, but as you know, when it gets tough, we have to get funny. <laughs> we'll be right back with more news and analysis. I'm State Senator Tom Watley, and I'm proud of the work we've accomplished this past year in Montgomery, bringing quality jobs to places right here in Alabama. We've recruited businesses and jobs to Lee, Russell, and Tallapoosa counties, expanded higher locally, but there's more work to be done right here at home. That's why I'm running for re-election to the Alabama State Senate. I look forward to working with our communities to create more jobs, train our local workforce, raise wages, and increase the overall quality of life right here in the heart of Dixie. It has been an honor to work for you. Now I'm looking forward to tackling our next set of challenges together.
voice of Alabama politics. Bet there was a young woman said that she, in 1977, was sexually assaulted, held basically held prisoner by Roy Moore in a car. She said he locked the doors, she couldn't open them, and that uh, she came out with uh, Gloria Allred, Red, uh, who is kind of famous for bringing famous out female yeah. uh, that have allegations against powerful men. A little men. bit my hero. Uh, she says that he, he tried to rape her, basically, in the parking lot of the old Hickory House. Roy Moore has denied all these allegations. I mean, the crazy thing is he said he didn't know where the old Hickory House was. Right, and what Susan said, who lived in the area at the time, it was kind of right there. Everybody knew where the old Hickory House was. And, you know, it's just, if you're going to lie, at least lie believably, I mean, there's a way to do that and do it right. I mean, I don't know. I, I believe the women who are coming forward because I think that these situations should always be taken seriously when women step forward. But I also can't help but look at Roy Moore when he says, None of this happened. I don't know where that is. Also, I don't even eat barbecue. It's like, okay, Roy Moore, come on. Like, well, Oh, Hickory House did everything, didn't they? Yeah, they, yeah, it was a meet and three. It wasn't just barbecue. They had, you know, just like we have it our meet and It would be like now. living in Montgomery and saying you didn't know about the Sahara restaurant. I mean. Where's that at? I actually don't oh, know where that is. No. <laughs> you know, but I tell you, there is a few things that are troubling about this accusation. One, it does not fit any pattern that we've seen with any of the other accusers. The other thing is, there. she said that she had, had not seen Judge Moore since their, that, that altercation. Mm -hmm. And then we come to find out, Susan, that she had. She had. And I went through the uh, court records just, uh, just the other night. And, in fact, the final paperwork for her divorce, which was, ended up being dismissed at that time, was signed by Judge Roy Moore. So he did at least preside over a her divorce which she actually they decided not to go forward with it they she had reconciled at that time right to be fair though in that stage of a divorce if you file the complaint and you start going through the divorce process you decide to reconcile you motion to dismiss there's a very real chance she never set foot in his courtroom and she never bothered to look at the signature at the bottom of the dismissal i mean that's that's plausible. that is plausible again she she said uh that she had not seen him and but then <clears throat> there is that. Then the other thing is that there are some anomalies on the the uh, the, the yearbook mm -hmm. that she showed on television, national television. Susan, you want to talk about that? I do. And I, granted, <coughs> I am not a handwriting expert by any stretch. It was just when I started going through these the other night, uh, several things started to stick out to me. And one we, thing I might say before that, we were able to obtain a... Uh, a yearbook from Southside uh, from 1977 mm -hmm. when she said it occurred. She said this is the same yearbook, her 1977 yearbook. We have authenticated the yearbook. We have authenticated the man who she is writing to. And uh, so we can go from here. We have a we have a copy. She signed of, this guy's yearbook, yes. and y'all know him. We well, have a copy. Well, we have a copy of it. Okay. We don't know him, but we've talked to him at length, and we've talked to others who were at school that time. They just didn't have their yearbooks handy. He did. All right, go ahead. Um, the the interesting thing, the first thing I noticed was that the handwriting in the inscription and the notation at the bottom are not by the same person. Obviously, it appears. It appears. Thank you. Um, the in, the inscription is actually in cursive, and as you can see, the uh, note at the bottom is in print. Uh, also, if you'll notice the 1977, uh, in the Christmas 1977, and the down below where it says 12 77 those sevens don't match. So after we got this and I read the inscription that she made, and I think what at the time was one of her boyfriend's uh, annuals, I got to looking at the similarities between where it says the old Hickory House and her handwriting. If you look at, if about two-thirds of the way down the page, there's a big word that says hint. If you look at that H and hint, and you go back and look at Hickory House, you'll see that it's shorter, that the hash on the left side is shorter than the one on the right side. Uh, if you look at the, her, she puts her address in here, it's 216 Oak Street at the time. If you compare that to back to your 1222, you'll see another similarity there. 
So it's very possible, I have, like I said, I have no conclusions here. It's very possible that this, this notation at the bottom of the Roy Moore uh, signature could be hers. It very likely could be hers. Now, whether it was done at the time that he signed the annual <coughs> or later, only she knows. The other thing, uh, Jack, is that it signed Roy Moore D period A period. And, right. And they say that that's a problem with that. Because he wasn't district attorney. Right. It was a, all right, let's take this woman out of the whole equation. Let's do that. Okay. There's still a pattern of creepiness. Oh, yeah. I don't care. You know, and then there's another girl later who said he called her out of her trigonometry class. The principal said Roy Moore's on the phone. She went in the office and he asked her on a date while she was in high school. That's creepy. I'm After sorry. After she refused to I give him her sorry. number. I'm sorry. That is creepy at mm -hmm. best. Okay. So what we're, and Tina Johnson, we're happy to say, uh, is the last one we've heard, well, not happy to say, but we've heard from her. She said that he, he, uh, uh, he grabbed her butt after a meeting. Uh, uh, look, there's passions on every side. If we went to every sitting senator and found every person they've ever known, I can assure you we'd find some creepy behavior. Al Franken, who I thought was one of the nicest guys in the U.S. Senate, now they're try they at least accuse him of being creep. creepy. Right. When H.W. Bush this week, somebody came out He's like American grandfather Un right now. I mean Unfortunately for Judge Moore, all this has come out during an environment where every accuser has come out of the woodwork. Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, uh, Sylvester Stallone. I mean, he's, it's and kind of bad timing on. for and him. And there's been young children at the heart of a lot of them. And again, we go back to the fact we don't know what happened. But we do know that if this did occur, and on, at least on some of them, it seems likely. If it occurred, it is totally unacceptable. Absolutely. All right, we're going to leave it right there. We'll come back with more news and analysis. I'm John Merrill. As your Secretary of State, I want to encourage each and every eligible U.S. citizen that's a resident of Alabama to be registered to vote and to obtain a government-issued ID. It's important for your information to be updated as well. Please contact your local Board of Registrars or download the mobile app at Vote for Alabama so you'll be prepared to vote on December the 12th. We'll see you at the poll. Lawson's Aesthetics and Med Spa is a one-of-a-kind medical spa offering a portfolio of rejuvenation services and advanced technologies to enable you to feel younger and look fabulous without the need for invasive surgery. Owned and operated by licensed physician Dr. Heather Lawson, the Lawson's Aesthetics and Med Spa offers advanced therapies for women and men to revitalize body and mind. Discover what you and Lawson's Aesthetics and Med Spa can accomplish together. It's your life. Live well, live strong, and live beautiful. The Energy Institute of Alabama promotes reliable, affordable, and clean energy to help grow our economy, create high-paying jobs, and build public support for Alabama's energy industry. Access to clean, affordable energy continues to be an issue of vital importance in the halls of government and around the kitchen tables across our nation. The Energy Institute of Alabama is the best source of energy industry information and how it affects households across the state, from convenient energy production to alternative fuels to solar power and beyond. Back to the V, the voice of Alabama politics. Jack, the Republican Party has stayed pretty much united. The, the party chairs have stayed united. The steering committee stay united. And most of the counties. But the young Republicans in Jefferson County, greater Birmingham, they, they don't think so. Well, you know, they may be a little more high-minded than the rest of the Republican vote. I think um, Roy Moore, look, he's got 
a floor and he's got a ceiling. And I think they're going to be 33% of the Republican voters that are going to stick with him no matter what. I think some of the Luther people who had decided, okay, I'm going to hold my nose and vote for more, are now having second thoughts. I think it hurts him. I'm not sure it beats him, but it hurts him. Beth, we were surprised, you know, there's the President Trump has not weighed in to any degree. He's saying that the people of Alabama should decide this, which I agree, it's, it's a people's issue. But we see uh, his uh, assistant chief of staff, her, his, her, his wife, uh, Gina Dearborn, <coughs> has come out and trashed Roy Moore, <coughs> the wife of Brian Taylor, the chief legal counsel to Kay Ivey. They've come out and trashed Roy Moore. We can see that here. Jonathan put it up on the screen. I mean, these are wives of prominent, prominent men in our state and in our country. And here they come out. And on Facebook, they, they, they are ashamed of our state. They're, they, they're against Roy Moore. Should we hold these women to that standard? Should their husbands come out and make a statement? Well, I mean, I don't know about Brian Taylor's wife, but I know Gina Dearborn's prominent in her own right. She is more than just her husband's wife. She's a known name around Montgomery in her own her own. Uh, so, you Ms. Know. Brian Taylor's <coughs> wife is a grant writer that gets paid handsomely by the state of Alabama. Right. But I mean, I, I think that, you know, I don't think these men should have to come out and explain for their wives. I think that if the men can have one opinion and the wives can have another and, you know, but they should be ready for whatever consequences so, come out I in their party. I think we have to hold Gina Dearborn to a little higher well, standard. But she, yeah, because she's all Because he's like Trump. deputy chief of staff to the yeah, president of the United chief States. Of staff. <laughs> Right, but what I'm saying is, though, is, you know, these same women are all pro-Trump, and they're all, you know, support, they supported him all the way through, and I don't have enough fingers to count the number of women who came out and accused President Trump of being improper, but now that it's Roy Moore, the tables have turned well, a little bit. I don't know that they supported him all the way through. We don't have any record of that. We know their husbands took well, jobs. You, well, there's hypocrisy on both sides. Yeah. I mean, right. all the Republicans, and I was one of them that said, you know, Bill Clinton, and I believed all those women that said he you know, came on to him and assaulted him, whatever. Some of the same people that said that about Clinton are saying, oh, Roy Moore is innocent. And some of the Democrats that defended Clinton are now saying Roy Moore is guilty. So there's hypocrisy on both sides. You know, I think the answer is just to put more women in office. Well, and I don't disagree <laughs> with that, and I'm not picking on the women here, but I'm saying if you're going to be standing up there and going rah, 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 and your wife's over here saying, hey, you know, I mean, that matters in the Republican Party. It might not matter everywhere else. I think the women should be running things. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Us white guys have messed it up bad enough. Yeah, y'all have a well, good this long Well, this has all sure helped Doug Jones. Yeah. It's yeah. helped him. I mean, so. there are Republicans who I'm shocked who are going to vote for him. The one thing that troubles me is, and, and we had radio callers on my show all week, some of whom said, I'm going to vote for Roy because I don't want Doug Jones, he's a liberal, he'll fight the Trump agenda. And that's probably true. But when some people have called and said, I don't care what he did 40 years ago, I'm still voting for him. That bothers me. Well, Susan, I, I think Jack has a point here. But you know who doesn't, the Republican that doesn't want Roy Moore more than everybody else Mitch is Mitch McConnell. Oh, sure. Yeah, and that was a theme. Um, I, I attended the, uh, or as a reporter, I attended the women uh, who, Republican women for more event this last week. And that was a that was a ringing thing that was by every almost every speaker there was this is Mitch McConnell trying to come into our state and tell us how to vote, and they're pointing their fingers back up at D.C. and well, saying this is the establishment. It sure didn't help Luther. No, <laughs> you know didn't. who else Mitch McConnell doesn't want in the Senate? A Democrat from Alabama that kills him too. You know what I mean? Like Mitch McConnell is about to lose no matter how this was cut. See, I can see a path for Mitch McConnell to win if Doug Jones goes to Washington. Because you know what? Then everything about the Trump agenda will go down and he can go, it's the Democrats. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and That's I've the heard upside. Other people say that. There's upsides to that, too. Here, here's another thing. And Doug Trump. Jones is a good guy. Don't no. get me yeah, wrong. The fact course. that he's spending hundreds of thousands of dollars advertising with everyone with us doesn't make us dislike you, Doug. We still like you. Here's, here's the I problem. I love you, Doug. You know, there's been some talk but about I love you, Doug. If, I if, love him. if uh, Moore gets elected, that the Senate may not seat him. They may kick him out. Yeah. The problem is, if they don't kick him out, if he wins, because he ain't gonna, he isn't gonna step aside. Oh no. 
Um, he has nowhere to go. It's going to hurt a lot, potentially hurt a lot of Republicans running all over the country because these Democrats in close races are going to say, look at this guy. My opponent is a member of the party that, that allowed an accused sex offender to, to be seated in the Senate. Donald Trump said on national also TV, uh, it was played on national TV, I don't care whether you believe it or not, he said that it was okay it was okay for him to grab women by their genitals, and, and the Republicans voted for him, and they seated him as president of the United States. It is the utter height of hypocrisy. Bill Clinton was accused by uh, Jennifer Flowers of sexually assaulting her, of having an affair. They seated his butt. And Paula, what was her last name? There's another uh, one. Paula Jones. Paula Jones. I, I was going to say Paula Cole. She did the she was from, Creek song. She was and, from Paradise Cove. And Juanita Park. Broderick. There were three of them. I mean, there was a bunch of them. Clarence Michael Thomas was, was accused. Everybody's I know, been I accused. I know what you're saying. And, 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 and it would be hypocrisy. Uh, it, it's just, I think the answer to this is why don't we all just start keeping our hands to ourselves and just... Like they taught us in kindergarten, right? right? Like, let's just keep our hands to ourselves and be respectful of each other and we won't have these problems. You know, somebody suggested the other day that we do an investigation in Congress. We only got about 10 seconds. Wonder, should we do an investigation over at the State House about how many... There are, there are enough millions to pay those people off. I would have retired <laughs> if I got a dollar every time that I felt uncomfortable around a man in the state house. All right, I'd well, be retired. We're going to leave it right there. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.